Now assuming that you already installed your Outlook 2007 program, let's go ahead and open it up and let's pretend that we're opening it up for the first time. So to get started, I'm going to come down here and click on the Start button and come up here and click on Microsoft Office Outlook to open it. Or on your Quick Launch toolbar down at the bottom here on the taskbar, they call it the Quick Launch because you have a bunch of software buttons you can add to that Quick Launch that when you click on it, in one click it automatically launches the program. You can see I've got more here if I just click on the double arrow and I can go up and click on Microsoft Office Outlook. Launches the program and again if this is the first time that you're opening up Outlook after you installed it, you're going to get a little wizard that's going to want to help you set up your email account. I recommend that when it comes to setting up your email account to call up your internet service provider because you can't send or receive emails over the internet without signing up through somebody like MSN or AOL or one of the more popular internet service providers. So in any case you get this wizard and it's going to ask you a bunch of things that you probably won't understand like POP3 or SMTP addresses. Well in any case I did have this set up with my email address but I deleted it so I can show you how to set it up again. So if you go through the wizard and you click cancel and you pull up Outlook and you didn't set up your email account you won't get your inbox and we'll cover all these different views a little bit later on but for right now we just want to set up our email account. Well just come up here and click on the tools menu go down and click on account settings and there's the email tab. We're going to go ahead and click new and this is about the spot that you're going to come to if you didn't click cancel and you open up Outlook for the first time the wizard's going to start about along the same lines here or about at the same screen and when it comes to setting it up what I like doing is setting it up manually checking the box down below and clicking next and it says what kind of email service do you have Microsoft Exchange if you do your company will probably set it up for you but if this is at home typically you're gonna set it up yourself so the default is internet email so again I signed up through AOL or MSN or some popular internet service provider select it and click next and again this wizard you can actually call one of the internet service providers over the phone and ask them to help you set it up as you go through the steps here it's gonna ask for your name in other words, the name of the email account, like Kurt Kershaw. Then the email address that you were assigned or that you set up with your internet service provider. And I'm going to type in Q at dreamforce.us. I know it could be Kurt Kershaw at dreamforce.us, but this is how I set mine up, okay? The email address that my internet service provider gave to me. Now again, all I can do is give you familiarity with the screens here and what I'm doing. This isn't probably how you're going to set yours up, but at least you get an idea of where to go and what to put in or, or what you're likely going to put into these fields here. So the name of your email account, the email address that you were assigned or that you configured with the Internet Service Provider. What account type is it? A POP3, IMAP, or HTTP. Again, Internet Service Provider will give that to you. And then they'll give you the incoming mail server and then the outgoing mail server. Just go ahead and type it in as they give it to you. And then down below, it's got the username. And again, this is how I set it up, according to what my internet service provider wants me to set it up as. It begins with the username Q. It's going to actually be the email address, but it's going to be Q plus dreamforce.us. And then, of course, we have to have a password. Because what it's doing here is that every time I click on the send or receive email, it goes on to the internet, to my internet service provider, and before it can actually access the server and get my emails, it needs the password, authentication. So I'll go ahead and type in my password and then check to remember the password because every time to go get my emails, the send and receive button, which you'll learn about later on, I don't want to have to type in my password over and over and over again. That gets annoying. I just want to hit the button once. If there's email, get it. If not, then nothing happens. So once I have it set up as far as I can take it here, I want to go ahead and click on test account settings to make sure that I got everything set up right. So when I click on it, it's going to see if it can log on and see if it can send a test email message. If it works and you got the password right and all the other settings set up correctly, you get green check marks. If it's wrong, you'll get a red X and just says, I can't do this. So if it's wrong, then of course you'd close out and verify everything here, make sure it was set up correctly, call your internet service provider and saying, look, did I get the right incoming mail server, outgoing mail server, password, click test again you keep testing it until finally you get those green check marks now down below you have the more settings button you can click on that and it says type the name by which you want to refer to this account for example is this going to be your work account or Microsoft mail server 
In other words, the email is going to come across and display as Q at Dreamforce.us. I can change that and call it Kurt's Q at Dreamforce.us or whatever I want. But for right now, I'll leave it alone and click Cancel. Now, before we go ahead and click Next and finish this up here, I want you to know that you can create as many email accounts as you want. Well, why would you want to do that? I like playing games. And what I mean by that is that I'll have my email address that I absolutely trust to nobody but to my closest friends. Then I'll create two or three or four or five or additional email accounts. And if I do shopping for things that I trust, like maybe Amazon.com or other shopping centers, I'll go ahead and I'll have an email address for that. And then for other things like, hey, free trial, get this free or that free or something like that, I'll have another email address. In fact, I'll probably call it free at dreamforce.us. So that way, if I start getting junk mail because some of these companies aren't scrupulous, they'll take my email address and sell it off to everybody, then I don't have to come back here and change my original email address and tell all my friends that, hey, I'm getting a new email address because I'm getting too much garbage email back. So that way I have my different levels of emails. My closest friends, I don't want to delete my email address, and I shouldn't have to if I trust them. And then, of course, the other levels of email addresses like, well, this is for free stuff. I don't care if they start spamming me on this because I can delete that email address and then they won't have access to me anymore. Anyways, click Next. Congratulations, you got it set up. Click Finish. I can go ahead and close out. Now remember, I clicked on the Test Account Settings and it gave me the green check marks. Well, if I come up here and click on Send and Receive, that email is going to come through today. You see that? Because Microsoft Outlook has this little courtesy thing to help you make sure that you got it set up correctly, it'll actually send you a little message that says, hey, Microsoft Office Outlook test message. I mean, if you get it, it means it was set up correctly. If you don't get it, well, then you better go back to your tools, account settings, select your email address, double click on it, and make the appropriate changes, okay? And then click Next and finish it up. Then you'll notice once I get my email, of course, it displays it today in the inbox and then down below over in the system tray. Well, it's got two things. It's got my Outlook icon here and then it's got a little email that says, look, you got an unread message here. So that way, if I have this minimized down to the taskbar, because Outlook doesn't work with some of the things we're going to go over, like reminders or appointments, little pop-ups without it being open. So what I'll do is I'll leave it open, minimize it. If I get emails, it'll show right here. It says, hey, you've got an email you haven't opened. That way I can work on other things without having this constantly open. And no, at the same time, if I get anything that comes in, it will display down below. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos. And for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.